Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. Do you just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die? I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. It is a write that down Wednesday here. The most innovative and potentially stupid segment in all of sports media where we put statistics next to our predictions like absolute buffoons every single week so you can see how wrong we are about pretty much everything on this Write show. This down. Although I might have to make an adjustment. I feel like one of us had a Stefan Diggs prediction that Ooh. just came off the board like Good 10 call. minutes ago. Oh yeah, very Stefan Diggs to the Texans. We'll talk about that. There. Been a lot of smoke there in in recent uh, months. Yeah. So his tweets have been epically cryptic since like the day before free agency. Just like little t- two three words, little line here, a line there, just yeah. like it was four yeah. years ago. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And the Texans used the Vikings' future second round pick that they got to acquire him. So in a way, the Vikings have traded Stefan Diggs again. You know, Vikings in kind of a involved. weird way. The Vikings the are involved in another Stefan Diggs trade. Yep. So we'll talk about that. We got a couple really interesting mocks to get to. Kevin Seifert floated something about the Vikings quarterback strategy that infuriated the internet. So we'll get to that too. So it's a busy day here on Purple Daily. But here's how right that down works. Three Vikings or football related predictions from everybody each week. They must be quantifiable. We keep track of a completion percentage and touchdowns on this show. And if you want to be like Jason and Lee, a family combination coming on here to uh, make their predictions, You can send Declan a message through the Score North app. Before we get to Judd's accountability, let's tell the audience about our favorite convenience store and gas station, Judd Zolgad, the fine folks at Quick Trip. That is exactly right. And and the reason why is because there are so many various things. You got the quality gasoline guarantee. You got the Karuba coffee. You got the snacks. You also, guess what? You have the chicken, and I'm going to tell you right now, Mm. you can put their chicken mano a mano with any of the competition. Fried chicken, chicken tenders, roasted whole chicken, boneless wings, chicken tenders, three or eight piece, prepared fresh daily, roasted whole chicken, prepared fresh daily. In other words, if you are, uh, if you need to stop for gas on the way home tonight, and you stop at Quick Trip, and now you're thinking, you know what? I don't have dinner. What am I going to get? Quick Trip has all the choices that you need. Your one-stop shopping for all your needs. And, of course, we appreciate them being the uh, title sponsors of Purple Daily. That's our friends at Quick Trip. Amen. Amen. Okay, boys, let's get right to the accountability session here. There's not a lot coming off the board this time of year, but we are making some UFL predictions. So you'll see a few things. In the absence of things coming off the board, we will highlight predictions that are still on the board. So, uh, Judd, you had nothing come off the board, but you did say the Vikings game in London will be against the Colts. Now, Declan, do you feel comfortable adding some steam to this or no? I don't want to put you in a bad spot. Uh, I was told it's not the Colts. I'll say it is another team in their division, though. I've heard it is is a team Mm -hmm. that is in that division that they Mm -hmm. have penciled in so far. Again, sources telling Declan, sources telling me, that it is an AFC team. For a home game? Uh, yes, it would so be it's a, a, home, they take a, a home game off the yep, board. It's a Vikings home game. And oh then boy, date TBD. I know typically the Vikings have played this game usually in October. And I think these games, what? They go October, November, right? They don't play any September or December games in London. Or maybe have they, I have they squeezed uh, like, in London games in December? I don't think they have. What's the earliest week we see? Is I it week like three? Yeah, I feel pretty, like it's pretty early. three or four. So maybe there are September games. But date TBD, but I did hear from a good source that is an, uh, it is an AFC uh, AFC South team. Oh, man. So we'll leave it on to... the board for now because the schedule yeah. comes out officially in like five weeks. But I'm very disappointed. Tracking right. for now. All right. Okay. I said the defenders would yeah. beat the Brahmas by double digits in there. Week one UFL clash. It, it was actually the other way around. The, the Brahmas won that game. If I'm not mistaken, the the, um, the week one of the schedule had the USFL against the XFL, and I think the XFL oh. might have gotten swept. So the Good defenders one. are an XFL team, and yeah. I believe the USFL now now they're going to play within the divisions this week. I'm I'm serious about this. I looked this up. So your defenders, XFL, bang, one of many XFL teams to have bad weeks. Brutal. I, I know, you know, I'm sure cost-cutting moves have been happening. Can I just say, as someone who loves The Rock, and I know Phil also loves The Rock, 
that website that UFL and it's XFL has wreck. is one of the worst navigating yes. websites and functional websites I have ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is atrociously it's bad. It's brutal, man. Horrible. Yeah, Horrible. I well, this will tell you because I had to look up some stats for one of Declan's oh. predictions that we'll get to. Yeah, yeah. So I was on uh, AJ McCarron's you. UFL page earlier this morning. And they can't even get, like, the statistical categories and columns to line up correctly. You fix your formatting, UFL. I know you're busy trying to scout the future of, you know, talent in football, but plus you can we can't. get a web guy? And plus, you can't go to the standings and click on the team names and get tit to the team homepage. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. Like, what am I doing? I also said Kirk Cousins' next photo or video of him throwing or holding a football would be on artificial grass. So I did a comb through old Kirky Boy's Instagram here. A lot of Falcon stuff. It's been it's been a, been a minute since I've combed through his social media. You know, he's not one of us anymore. And uh, there was a promotional video of him. It was like these two guys who do like it's like an entertainment show, but it's also like kind of like a a church connection. I don't know exactly what it is, but he's promoting that these guys are going to be in Atlanta at some point. And it's like these guys are throwing him a football through the video. And then he catches the football, and he's standing there holding a football. Okay. He doesn't throw it, but my prediction said the next photo or video of him throwing or holding a football would be oh. on artificial grass. He was on real grass is what I'm here to tell you. So I was wrong. Listeners, Will said Jordan Love will represent the Packers in the Pro Bowl last year, which he did not. Or he'll be off the roster by week one of 2024. Yeah. I think we can pretty safely take this off. If there's some crazy trade that bumps Jordan Love from the Packers roster, I guess. Because like, even if he's on injured reserve, he'd still be on their roster, right? Yes. So, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, he would have to be traded or cut. So if, that, if, if somehow Jordan Love gets cut or traded, Will, we'll definitely circle back to this one. Fair. And then Declan said A.J. McCarron would account for at least three touchdowns for the St. Louis Battlehawks against the Michigan Panthers. He had two. Came up one short. Ah, them's the breaks. A.J. McCarron still grinding professional football. Mm-hmm. Great football town. That St. It Louis, is. they love the Battlehawks. Are they using the same stadium that the Rams used to play in, I think, too? I think they do use, yeah. It used to be, what, the TWA Dome? Okay. That's it's hilarious. changed by now, but yeah, I think they are. So with that, we have a tight battle here, excuse me, two months into the Write That Down season for 2024. It's Super Bowl to Super Bowl is is the Write That Down season. Declan, 44% completions. I'm at 43% completions, just under 43%. Listeners at 40%. Judd at 30%. Declan, myself, and the listeners each have one touchdown. Judd still in search of his first. Bad year so far. Career stats going back to 2021, Declan 36.3% completions, Judd 35%. I'm at 33 and a half. Listeners just under 23%. I lead with 47 touchdowns, but you guys are fast approaching on the touchdown front. So there we go, gentlemen. There's your accountability session. Let's get Jason and Lee in the house. You have a father-son combination on Write That Down today, correct, boys? Yes, we do. Sure. Well, let's okay, let's start with Lee then. Why don't you give us? You're wearing a Fran Tarkenton jersey for and for the audio audience. You also have the Helga horns on. You got the whole getup. What's your <laughs> gotta, first? Gotta represent. <laughs> yes, it's awesome. What What's your first Vikings memory? Um, you know, back when I was uh, probably around 13, 14 years old. Uh, you know, I love watching the NFL and the uh, Purple People Eaters. Uh, they're the ones that uh, got me uh, hooked on the Vikings. Uh, I grew up in. Uh-oh. Southern California, everybody was a Ram fan. Um, so, you know, I got hooked on the Vikings, and especially when Sir Francis came in, uh, he's the man. And I uh, used to love watching uh, the Rams come to Minnesota and uh, stormy weather and snowing and get their butts kicked. I hated it here. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Do you, do you miss outdoor football? Do you kind of wish that U.S. Bank Stadium wasn't such a lavish indoor uh, palace? You know, I uh, – in the beginning, I used to uh, used to miss uh, yeah, the the games that uh, they played outdoors, and so I don't know. I guess I kind of gotten used to the indoor. 
Like a, you've gone it's, uh, soft, Lee. You've it gone gets you soft. soft. <laughs> it gets you soft. That's what happens to all of us. I'm the same yeah, way. I guess. <laughs> So, okay, Jason, what about you? I'm, I'm assuming that Lee forced you into a life of Vikings torture here. So what's uh, what's your oh, first there. Vikings memory? <laughs> yeah, he'll he'll tell you that he never did, but he was a subscriber for Viking Update back in the day, and nice. he would randomly leave them all over the house for me to find, right? Propaganda so, all over the come house. Come on, Lee. Right. And never, so, never. That was, um, was that Bob, Bob Lertzema, wasn't, didn't he found yes. Viking Update? Yes, he did. Yeah. And t Tim Yotter for 20 plus yeah. years. I did yeah. the player profiles, okay, so for like oh, 12 years. Oh, there you go. Those are the best, yeah. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, I mean, all the eras have been great. I, I think my first real memory of a fan of me being in Purple Purgatory, I guess, was we were born in California. We, we went to Arizona to watch them play the Cardinals at the Arizona State Stadium. And I know you guys recently talked about this game because Josh McCowan is now our oh, quarterback's no. coach. Well, we were at that game. And oh. so <laughs> it felt like a Vikings home game with about 80% Vikings fans. And for us to lose with nine seconds and all, all 10 Cardinal fans booing us to get out of there, it just – it reminded me of uh, I'm doomed for life. I guess <laughs> that was oh, that was the longest uh, five five and a half hours ride home without a word. No. Yes, it was. <laughs> that was 2003, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, yep. Yeah. Oh my God! What a terrible. Uh, like six and zero to start that season too. Yep. Best yep. offense in the league. Yep. Here we go. It's finally coming yep. back together. Uh, Far if, we, if we won, we were in, and we did. We missed it. <laughs> so the Packers went man. instead. That's no. it. Even worse. Yep, exactly right. So, all right, let's let's get to the predictions here. Let's go. We'll start with Lee over to Jason and then Judd, Declan. I will round it out. We'll make one prediction each per round. We'll make three trips around the room here. They must be football related and quantifiable. Write it down. You like writing things down. Or show related if you want to. But uh, Lee, you're first out of the gate, man. Why don't you start? Up? All right. Well, write this down with the... Uh... Free agency uh, pickup of our new edge wrestlers, Jonathan Gennard and Andrew Van Ginkle. They will each record a sack of a certain quarterback whose name we won't mention when we uh, play the Falcons. Wow, the Desmond Ritter hate on this podcast right now. Is <laughs> not going to stand for it. <laughs> All right, Jason, what's your first prediction? All righty, we'll write this down. I believe Judd kind of made a prediction about this guy a couple weeks ago, but I'm going to add a little more spice to it. The Aaron Jones revenge tour is real. So Aaron Jones will have 120 all-purpose yards in both regular season games against the Packers and have a total of four TDs between both games. Ooh, let's go. Very I don't know if that's a touchdown or just a deep pass, but... I think that's a touchdown. Yeah, I'm going touchdowns. touchdown. Yeah, yeah. I okay. definitely think Sounds it good. is. We'll Sweet. give you a tud for that. Write it down. You like writing things down. Judd. All right. Uh, draft prediction. LSU's Malik Neighbors will be selected ahead of Ohio State's Marvin Harrison Jr. in the draft. Oh. He has climbed up the board quite a bit. I, I think it's, uh, again, I, Wait, I what think. Sm what smokescreen blogs are you getting sucked into I here? Huh? I think there's, well, I think that there is a internal perception in the league that shifted Malik right on an even par, if not more. And, and I think his skill set actually as a pro might be as good or better. I think the public opinion is of course it's Marvin Harrison jr. Everyone has heard about him. So I'm going with Malik neighbors actually goes, for instance, off the record to the Cardinals Malik neighbors goes before Marvin Harrison jr. Interesting. Wow. Well, that'll, that'll teach you to ignore all the, <laughs> all the drills and all the Write it down. You like writing things pro down. days and combines, huh? Exactly right. The Dexter. All right. So write this down. I think the Vikings who have not addressed their offensive line much in free agency, they will draft at least two offensive linemen in this year's draft. The Vikings will draft at least two offensive linemen. And this year's draft can be any combination, guard, center, tackles, doesn't matter, but at least two of them will be drafted by the Vikings in this year's draft. I'm going to I'm gonna piggyback a little off decks here. Write it down. You like writing things down. Because I think the premise of them looking for starters is 
they are they are looking for a starter maybe at left guard maybe at quarterback so write this down week one the minnesota vikings will start a rookie on either offense or defense they will start a rookie on offense or defense could be a jj mccarthy could be a fourth round left guard that wins the job could be a byron murphy the second the massive 300 plus pound uh, defensive tackle from Texas, but they will start a rookie on offense or defense. So if it's the Iowa punter, that doesn't count. No, because you wouldn't be starting as a punter. It's yeah. <laughs> but that would be awesome if they drafted that guy. I'm all in on that. Oh, I'd be all for. I'd snag him. him in the fourth round just to be sure, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want him falling into the wrong hands. Write it down. You like writing things down. Okay, back to Lee. All right. Uh, well, Judd uh, kind of mentioned this uh, last week, but I'm going in a little different direction uh, with our uh, free agency pickups for the defense. Um, write this down, that uh, the Vikings defense will be in the top seven for total defense in the end of season 2024. Okay. Scoring defense, like points allowed or yardage uh, defense? Uh, yardage, uh, average yardage per game. Okay. Yardage. Defense. Okay. Let's throw that in there. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right. Write it down. You like writing things down. Jason. All righty. Write this down. Vikings will be drafting the offensive rookie of the year in this year's draft. Wow. Oh. No. Mm. Off the record, you care to care to speculate on who you want to throw a name out there just for fun. I, I'm hoping May, to be honest. I know there's a lot of steam for JJ and a lot of these guys, but I, I think the guy that could step in, obviously we've talked about our offense being where what we've got and the best probably situation for a quarterback, and I think the one that could step in and day one get going would probably be May. There's a lot of – I feel like there's so many conflicting things this week more than – like we've had yeah. Michael Penix steam – We've had the. I feel like the only quarterbacks, Caleb Williams not counting, like the only quarterback that really hasn't been connected to the Vikings in some meaningful way is Bo Nix at this point. Yep. yep. The pe the Penix private workout, the Drake May love, the JJ McCarthy multi day private workout meetings and stuff. The only one that hasn't come flying down the backstretch is is Bo Nix. There's still time. And I think even if we get McCarthy and he starts maybe week four or five, he might be able to get up numbers better than maybe some of the other quarterbacks that start day one. So, yeah, I, I do like Jaden Daniels chances too True. in Washington. I, yeah. I think that that might be a, a pretty good fit there. Chicago. I can't tell the bears are definitely improving and the bears are going to be better. I do find it a little bit concerning though, that they're going to have a defensive coach. And that that's sort of the old Zim type of thing where, we're, you know, where's your expertise? Where's your focus? But I, yeah. I like it. I like yeah. it. All right. Um, I'm going to go with an off the field NFL prediction because this one seems pretty obvious to me. And I need to raise my percentage points at some point here. Rasheed Rice of the Chiefs will be suspended for two or more games for the upcoming season. He will be suspended for two or more games. I see now he has copped to actually having rented the, the Lamborghini that was racing in Dallas and and that crashed. So are, are we talking, we, we must be talking about some type of like fast and furious challenge, right? It's like that race was, I mean, that wasn't, it was stupid, but it was, it, it was impressive. They were was definitely it, did, did going. They, did the parties know each other or was it just like. You got a fast car and I got a fast car. Thanks, Let's... Tracy. Thanks, Tracy Chapman. Tracy Chapman. <laughs> you got a fast Luke car. Holmes. Um, I don't know. That's a good question, but I wouldn't be surprised if they set that up. Like it was very. Did they all walk off together? Yeah, they were all walking away together. In I mean, slow it didn't motion look like... with explosions. I don't think there was the any background. threat of like they. I don't think they were clashing. I think they were just racing. Unfortunately, they were doing it on a Dallas freeway. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I'll do that in my Hyundai uh, Tucson. You know, I'll just pull up, <laughs> just pull up like to a stoplight, shifting down, give the give the nod, yeah. <laughs> light the up the wheels. The <laughs> oh, I like it. Get the spinners. <laughs> All right, over to Declan here for your second prediction. All right, second prediction from me. Write this down. Michael Penix will be drafted by one of these three teams: Cowboys, which I mentioned yesterday; 
Seahawks, who could use a future at quarterback. Or the Vikings. Oh, He'll be drafted yeah. by one of those okay. three teams. Yeah, Cowboys, th- Seahawks, Vikings. I think this is a touchdown. I know that you're you're you've got like three teams of netting here for safety, but there's a bunch of other teams that could draft him. The yeah. Broncos could draft him. The Saints, the Raiders, like so I'm willing if, if Declan nails one of these three teams, unless Judd, you want to fight me on this. No, that's fine. I think it's probably a touchdown. Mm-mm. So okay. Write this down. My second prediction, now that Stefan Diggs is the newest target for CJ Stroud. That's a nice little weapon there. And we saw what's st- now Diggs is 30. He's 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 not the same age in his prime as he was when he elevated Josh Allen four years ago, but he can still play some ball. So last year, the Texans were 13th in average points per game offensively. Write this down. The Houston Texans will be a top five scoring offense in the 2024 NFL regular season. Stroud, Diggs, they got. Mm. Joe Mixon, right? Did they get Joe Mixon? Yep. yep, they did. They signed Joe Mixon. So they got some. They got some pieces. They got a couple. Nico Collins, like they got some dudes who can catch the ball right now on that team. And um, I think it's only Tank Dell's coming back, right? Yep. So, yep. top five scoring offense for the Houston Texans. Write this down. All right, final trip around the room here, Lee. What's your third and final prediction? Okay, well, I have uh, I have two sons, and uh, so this is from my youngest son. Uh, his, uh, write this down. The Vikings will make the playoffs and win a playoff game before uh, un- uh, one certain quarterback and the Falcons make the playoffs. <laughs> okay. So the Vikings will make the playoffs and win a playoff. They So basically they will win a playoff game before the Falcons make the playoffs. Yes, that's it. Okay. I, I like that. I like I the love slander. The, the exactly. Slander, man. Kirk slander. <laughs> yep. Yep. I love the the whole the family has hard turned feelings on Kirk. towards eight. <laughs> well, we've been fans long enough. This is the most exciting time. We've we've retreaded <laughs> quarterbacks forever, so we're ready for Amen. something different. Amen. Yeah. That's it. And we'll we'll uh, we'll get Lee, going. Stick with Good us time. here for a second, Lee, because we'll give you guys your platform. But Jason, why don't you make your third and final prediction first? Write that down. Well, I guess if we're getting the offensive rookie of the year, like I just last predicted, write this down. KOC and Quasey will get extended before the start of week one this coming season. Oh, so the Wills are going to love, they're going to love the off season so much. The draft, the, the vibes. I think Quasey's cooking this off season. Yeah. The first season he had, it wasn't the greatest, but I think he's shown progression. I don't think you draft a quarterback, right. a rookie and, then just say, all right, you're on a lame duck the following year. And and, yes. and so I, I don't think they want to let it get to that point. I think if we can get our quarterback this year, they're going to say, all right, guys, let's let's give you an extension for three, four years and see what you can do. I love that. I, I think that's exactly right. Because you can't like th- this buys them time. Yep, it should. Yeah, Because like you can't be like if J.J. McCarthy <clears throat> doesn't work out within the first like two years, you guys are fired. So. Yeah. I, makes, I think you're exactly right. It makes it even more hilarious what Carolina did, which is, yeah. okay, we're all going to take a deep breath. Yeah, we're going to reset. Right. We're going to trade up. We're going to get our quarterback of the future and then fire everyone b- b- yeah. before, <laughs> before the season. And the owner mandated the quarterback. <laughs> it's such a mess. Drinks on fans. He's an idiot. He's a buffoon. Yeah, it's uh, – oh, yeah, the Vikings are not that. So that's the the good news. Well, you guys were awesome here. Jason and Lee, the family connection. Since you've got this life-changing platform right now on Purple Daily, is there anyone in your lives you'd like to thank that helped you get to this pinnacle moment? Go ahead, Pops. Uh, well, I guess I, I have to thank my wife for uh, putting up for all these years of my uh, uh, obsession with the Vikings <laughs> and my craziness. Uh, so uh, I have to thank her first and then uh, also my Two boys for helping me uh, along this journey. And uh, right now we have a, a third generation, my grandson, Easton. Uh, he's uh, starting to become a, a Viking uh, fan. So Sorry, uh, Easton. Sorry, guy. no option <laughs> in this. It's very clear you guys don't have options. We do not, nope. we do not mandate that <laughs> our children become Vikings fans. <laughs> Propaganda everywhere in the house. Grandpa, I love the Packers. Well, then I'm not your grandpa anymore, yeah. Easton. 
<laughs> Jay, Jason's grooming him. He, he he's not setting out the Viking updates, but uh, you know he's uh, he's getting them uh, he's getting them prepared. <laughs> I love it. Amazing, Jason. What about you? So, I just uh, I mean, just say, say thanks for uh, having us on, and uh, you guys are awesome. Love listening to you. Uh, my son introduced me to uh, your podcast, and uh, you know I'm hooked now. So uh, awesome, man. You know. Uh, Last thing is, be, uh, before I die, uh, you know, I keep saying that. Uh, I'm getting, uh, I was 69 this year, so I hope it uh, happens be, before I go. <laughs> you still got some time left, Lee. You still got some That's time it. left. Oh, yeah, most definitely. The Vikings may or may not oblige, but you still have some time left. So, <laughs> we'll see. All right. Awesome. Thanks again. All right, guys. Great stuff. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Jason, you want to throw some words out? Yeah, let me just... Just yeah, obviously yeah. my wife, obviously my dad, uh, my brother, uh, you know, growing up, we uh, would watch games religiously and reenact plays as touchdowns were scored. So just a shout out to him as well. Um, he brought up my son. I am grooming him. We recently moved to Colorado about four years ago. And he's like, Dad, there's a lot of kids at school that are wearing orange for Broncos. And I said, you you take that out of your mouth. You wear purple hair in this house. <laughs> so, um, and you guys, I mean, it, it's been another thing for me and my dad just to get on the phone and have a conversation of, did you watch Purple Daily today? Did you see the take? So I appreciate you guys and what you guys deliver. And it's been another thing for me and my dad just to keep communicating, talking Vikings as much as we can. Love it, you so, guys. Hey, thanks, thank guys. you guys for the kind words. Awesome job with your predictions. And we'll definitely see you guys again sometime, all right? All awesome. right, thanks, guys. Great. Thanks right, again. There they are. Jason and Lee, the family connection, gener generations of tortured Vikings fans in that family. <laughs> you take that Broncos talk out of your mouth right now or no dinner. You take that Broncos talk out of your mouth, we'll put some purple soap in your mouth. I don't ever want to hear the words Russell Wilson or Even John Viking Elway ever again. updates around the house might be my favorite thing. Oh, yeah. Is Viking update still rocking or is it uh -uh. R.I.P.? Yeah. It's R.I.P. I sat next to John Holler for most uh, Vikings games next to those guys. I love me some Vikings update. You know oh, you Holler's made it if, if, if John Holler John gave Holler, you man. a Christmas CD mix. I you know got you yes. got the approval from John Holler. That was a yeah. big, that was a, I was like, oh, wow. I must be doing something right. I got the CD mix from John Holler. John oh, Holler is great. He's fantastic. Wearing yeah. those 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 cut off jean shorts at training camp, man. Ripping just smokes it. between oh, at halftime, coming in, ripping go. heaters. Oh, yeah. Love me some Johnny. Awesome guy. So hey, before we, before we make our last trip around the room here, let's shout out our friends over at Nicolay Law, the official and exclusive personal injury law firm of Purple Daily. And they are proud to serve the Twin Cities community. You may have seen a billboard or two around town of our friends at Nicolay. They're just your normal everyday folks, the ones you see at the gas station walking the dog. They know how life is in the Midwest and in Minnesota because they're living it just like you are. And when an unexpected accident occurs, you can give them a call, and you know you're working with people who truly understand where you're coming from. Get Minnesota's local award-winning injury lawyers. Get Nicolay at nicolaylaw.com, or give them a call at one eight five five nicolay Also, Dex, let's shout out our friends over at Aquaside here. Hey, the weather's starting to turn. Yep. This week, we're going to get some 60 degrees. It's almost lake season. Aquaside is here. That's right. So they have a complete line, Aquaside does, of pond control products that will take care of anything from weeds to algae. In fact, you know, maybe you're looking at the bottom of your lake and you don't know what the heck is on there. Well, they'll help you identify those weeds and offer treatments for you to advice free of charge. So you can go to Aquaside.com. They have their Aquaside pellets. These are safe products. They're registered with both the EPA and DNR. So this isn't just some random thing you're throwing into your lake. You can go check them out. Go to Aquaside.com. And yeah, as you get that dock into the water here, hopefully in the next month, or so and you see that nasty stuff and you want it removed go check out our friends at aquaside they'll help you out all right gentlemen three more predictions here from us write this down and then some other fun juicy stuff to squeeze in before the end of the show judd all right i am going to join the ufl prediction oh, business guy. wow oh the guy mocks us for years but for i'm making gonna push these... it out but i'm gonna push it out in zolgadian fashion i'm gonna push it out 2026 Case Cookus of the Memphis Showboats, former Viking, will be the MVP of the UFL this season. Wow. Quarterback Case Cookus, who Let's I go. once saw have a literal cup of coffee in training camp with the Vikings. He's now a Memphis Showboat. He will be the MVP of the UFL this season, did, coached by John DeFilippo. The Did you make this prediction last year? I hope so. 
I love Case Cookus. Someone, well, let me see. maybe I, I, did. I have no idea if I did or not, but I, I hope I did. Let me do a search, a uh, control F 2023 spreadsheet. Case Cookus. I, I definitely maybe made like a touchdown prop predict, but we probably have made some predictions on them before. Uh, two, how about 2022? Let's search 2022. Case Control F. There's nothing in 23. Cookus. Well, Cookus showed up in training camp. Was that what year was that? 21? 20? Yeah, 20. When all the quarterbacks were. Or was that 20 COVID, during right? No, no, the no. The pandemic. Okay, 2022. We had multiple Case Cookus predictions. Right. I'm back. We had. Uh, here we go. We had Case Cookus will replace Brian Scott as the starting quarterback for. The Philly Stars of the USFL. Philadelphia Stars, yeah. yeah Case yeah. Cookus will throw multiple touchdowns, and the Stars will upset the Generals. And then that, those are both Declan. And then I predicted Case Cookus will find his way on an NFL training camp roster, which it's he only, did. It's only right that I now have joined the, the Cookus bandwagon. <laughs> Didn't know there was such a thing, but here we go. Okay, back over to Declan for your write this down. third and final prediction. All right, write this down on uh, – NFL draft prediction again from me. There'll be no running backs taken in the first 40 picks of this year's draft. Whoa. Okay. No one going in round one. I'd be shocked if anyone goes in round one. But I'm going to linger this in a little bit into day two. I don't, I, I, I'm a little scared going top 50. I think someone will eventually take a running back. But mm. top 40 picks, no running back. So the first oh. running back won't be drafted until 41. All right. Okay. And then my final prediction is... Write this down. It's a parlay. I'm going to lock in some of these over-unders from DraftKings this week. We went over them on the show earlier this week. So I'm going to lock these numbers in. I'm going to do a three-team parlay here. Okay. I'm looking for a, a touchdown later in the write-that-down season. Cowboys under 10.5. Jaguars over 8.5. Chargers with Jim Harbaugh, and did you see the clip of the like the strength and conditioning guy that he brought over from Michigan explaining very seriously with his shaved head and his steely countenance? Oh, that guy's not messing around. He's explaining how he, you know, a lot of a lot of people think that. By the way, uh, Chargers over eight and a half. A lot of people think that it is my job to break players. It is my job to make sure players are unbreakable. Yeah, that's pretty. And here's how I do that. Yeah, that guy is. So, so they're winning guy, 12 games, 100%. That guy is not yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so those are the write that down predictions write this down. and the accountability session. Okay, before we get to a quarterback watch item and a couple fun mocks, Stefan Diggs traded. What was the package? It was the second round pick, the Vikings second round pick via Houston. Right goes to the Bills, and then Stefan Diggs is now C.J. Stroud's number one target. So, woof. Yeah, Your a little thoughts? bit more than that as well. There are some other draft picks here. I'm trying to get the shelf here. So the Bills receive a 2025 second-round pick from the Texans, which is also from Minnesota technically. And the Texans receive Diggs, a 2024 six and a 2025 fifth. Mm. So that little extra draft compensation also sprinkled in that trade to the Texans too. Um, last year, Diggs in the first half season was still mostly Stefan Diggs, but he kind of hit a wall in the second half and he wasn't the guy he used to be. I mean, Houston looks like they're primed for a huge year here. They're, they got a rookie quarterback. They're loading up on things around the rookie quarterback. What a crazy concept to do, right? On yeah. both sides of the football, they get to Neil Hunter with Will Anderson there. They have great offensive weapons. I mean, hell, they could have been in the AFC title game last year with a rookie QB. So they're trying to go for it in that loaded conference um, and Diggs, look, I know he's some people call him Madonna and he puts out these cryptic things, but he's also a really damn good receiver. So, I mean, you just kind of, I wouldn't say after you have to live with it because there is a line that definitely he probably crosses to a degree, but I mostly give ben the benefit of the doubt to Stefan Diggs because he's really damn good at football. His problem now is the clock is ticking too, though. Like, and I do do think he, he could be really good for eight a year. The clock is ticking, and he has proven himself to be a, such a huge shelf life guy, which is funny because I I remember there was a time early in his tenure here when he had taken off that on the old radio show on fifteen hundred ESPN, Phil and I did an entire segment on how it was so nice to have two receivers who were low maintenance at, at the time and Stefan Diggs yeah. and a Adam Thielen and Stefan has become about as high maintenance as you can possibly get. But does, I mean, 
I think for what the Texans are doing, I, I agree with Declan. It, it's worth it's worth the quote unquote risk, and the price point was it's not inexpensive, but it's reasonable. So I just I think this Houston has to get the payoff quickly here. One slightly because of uh, Stefan's age, and two, man, he has become a handful. Like the whole thing with Allen and all that stuff. He just, it, it just, it feels like, it feels like he went from being for a receiver, relatively low maintenance type of guy to now it's like, you better have success fairly quickly or the cryptic tweets are going to start. And it feels like now the cryptic tweets always start at some point. Yeah. But it's, but it, it took like three years in Buffalo for it to happen. Just like it took three or four years. And all you really need is two or three years. Just get me, saying. get me age 30, 31. You know, you're probably gonna have to figure out what the contract looks like going forward. But this 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 vaults the Texans with, especially with the defense that they're building too. You know, they added Daniel Hunter, they lost Grenard, but they got a D'Amico Ryan's focused on that defense, and then you've got this offensive thing that's exploding. This should be an inspiration for the Vikings, where you've got you've got some great little pieces all over your roster, and it's helping elevate your quarterback. Now, C.J. Stroud seems like you know, with or without talent around him, like he's going to find a way to be a really good NFL quarterback, but there's a great infrastructure. He's got some weapons and, um, and now he's got Stefan Diggs moving forward. The Vikings already have a better receiver than Stefan Diggs and Justin Jefferson. This is this, the, the Texans should be inspiration for what the Vikings are capable of here in the next two or three years. If they can find the right young quarterback, they've got the infrastructure. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Um, okay. Quarterback watch 2024. Your old colleague Kevin Seifert put a juicy post up on ESPN.com yesterday, and uh, and now I don't. Now Kevin's usually not one for like reckless speculation, so I trust that this is rooted in conversations with people behind the scenes here. I'm just going to read you three paragraphs, and you guys tell me what you think. This triggered people on Vikings Twitter and across the well, internet yesterday. It got aggregated fairly incorrectly. Right. With a headline that triggered fans. I don't think Seifert's actual piece, once they read it, was nearly as triggering. But here's what here's what he wrote. Interviews at the league meetings in Florida revealed the Vikings are working down parallel paths to cover for a pair of different outcomes. On the one hand, they've made deep plans to evaluate the top prospects via private workouts and or visits. They've formed the outlines of a structure focused on developing a rookie quarterback. You know, we've heard all these Michael Penix, J.J. McCarthy, Jake May, right? On the other hand, the Vikings are preparing for the possibility of riding with offseason free agent addition Sam Darnold in 2024 and then regrouping with either a quarterback drafted with a lower pick this year or perhaps a look ahead at the 2025 class. Naturally, there is a level of gamesmanship involved in their comments. No team in their position would sell out publicly toward either of the outcomes. You want to keep your cards close to the vest. But the Vikings also know they can't will themselves to draft a coveted quarterback prospect. Like, they need other teams to play ball, potentially, right? So he's essentially saying, yeah, they've, they're have they focused on this year's quarterback class, but they are also mapping out a plan B or a parallel path that involves 26-year-old Sam Darnold seeing if they can elevate him, turn him into the next Baker Mayfield or... Uh, Geno Smith, right? Hmm. And they kind of punt quarterback for later in the draft or 2025. Mm-hmm. Heads exploded all across the country. Well, yeah, because I, I want to say at least one of the aggregators I saw, of course, took that story and put an inflammatory headline, basically. Vikings to roll Vikings with Sam won't. Darnold. Yeah, and people went nuts. Ah, what's this? Because that's how Twitter works, and that's that's fine. Kevin's one of the smartest people I know, and he is a very... He, he is a very clear-thinking writer who doesn't really take huge opinions. So what he wrote is a 1,000% right. And, and, like, the Vikings have alluded to this. Like, they have talked about we can't – O'Connell, I think it was at the Combine, but at some point O'Connell basically said we can't force teams to trade with us. He's like, we can't go to the Cardinals and say, you have to give us four. This is a stick-up. And the Cardinals are like, oh, my God, here's the fourth pick. So, so what Kevin wrote is a 1,000% right. It's what they have to do. The Vikings have to have parallel path. You know, you, you, I'm, I think if we were to do a pie chart of want, 
It's not a pie chart of praise or blame. I think the pie chart of want is 60%, 65% is a want to trade. And it, it's a want to trade up into that top uh, five. But because they don't have the power to mandate that, there yeah. has to be there has to be a okay. Would we take Penix or Bo Nix conversation at least? Mm -hmm. And then more importantly, there there has to be a would we just try and build out the team, roll with Darnold, and then add a quarterback through the draft, through free agency again if Darnold doesn't work out. So what Kevin wrote is a thousand percent correct. Is that the fun? Hey, let's talk about trading up for a top five. No, but like I I don't think what he wrote was any type of, Oh my God, they're doing this. They're doing that. Mm -hmm. They would be, it would be a fireball offense to not have about three plans. Yeah. So I agree. It's funny. I, Cause I think a lot of this quarterback discourse, it, it, if, if you aren't saying they need to sell the farm and trade up and go for it all, right. Sell out at all costs without considering any other options to get their young quarterback. Then you're somehow wrong in this, but they are they are clearly mapping out. I mean, they've just look at what they've done. They've had private workouts with JJ McCarthy, private workouts with Penix, Drake May. So they're clearly planning for different. They're trying to see how much they like various guys. I still stand by what I said on yesterday's show. There's probably people are treating this like there's only one right answer, and boy, if they don't get the right answer, in all likelihood, based on their infrastructure, Kevin O'Connell, there are multiple correct answers to this quarterback test here. I will also say, maybe I'm a sicko for this, there's a parallel universe where I would love to see the next 12 months play out with Sam Darnold under the KOC tutelage and Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison, just for like, almost just like sports. Wouldn't it be kind of fun to see, okay, if they had to roll with Sam Darnold, how good could Kevin O'Connell turn Sam Darnold into, right? Like how high of a level of quarterback play could he squeeze out of someone that's perceived to be an epic first round bust? Am I a sicko for sort of yeah, wanting to see what that looks like? Yes, you are. <laughs> be, because you have an opportunity here or you might like under one of these plans, there's no question. You, I'm not you saying it's preferable. It's not my number one right, choice. But you I'm have just, an opportunity. I'm curious. To potentially trade up and draft a 10 year answer or more well, like Sam, the, Sam Darnold's only like, 26. Like, yeah, you have a chance to develop. You have a chance to do something again. This franchise uh, founded in 1961 has never taken a quarterback in the top 10. Yeah. So, so yes, I think you're sick because what you're doing in your sick, <laughs> twisted, demented Larry way, you Larry, sick. you, you, you fat, you, <laughs> what you're doing is you are, you know, what you're doing is you're doing the nineties. It's nineties. Like it was at the wild game last night. It's 90s with night pleasure. with you because that's what I mean. Is Sam Darnold not a 90s plug in Vikings quarterback? Yes, well, but, he the, is. but the 90s plug in quarterbacks were like 40 year old Warren Moon and 30 some year old like Sean Randall Sal Cunningham. Sean Salisbury came along. I mean, there was a variety. Like, we went to all of the levels. Yeah. So, anyway, I hope that door one, which I think the Vikings want. Is is the door, but it's Seifert's. Seifert is a beat writer doing a really good job covering the team. It's his okay. job to give us what they're doing. Let me use a let me use a golf metaphor for Declan's going to understand this. Okay, you, you're you know, you're having a fun day on the golf course. Maybe you got a couple a uh, couple drinks in you, and you're feeling pretty good, right? And yep. you get up to a you get up to a 580 yard par five. And ideally you would take a driver off the tee. That is your, your first option would be, I should take probably take a driver to hit the ball as far as I can. But in a parallel universe, wouldn't it be kind of fun to play this hole with only a pitching wedge and strike? Yeah, I'm just you're saying, drunk. I want to see. <laughs> if the Vikings are drunk, the hill, yeah. then, then you see, sick, I, your sick response. You're sick. I kind of want to see what Kevin O'Connell can do with Sam Darnold. It's I mean, not the it's not the first thing like for the health of the franchise. I want a rookie scale contract quarterback, but I'm just curious. I'm just curious. That's yeah, all I'm you, saying. You will get Go destroyed ahead. in the comments for this, by the way, which is which will be fun to see on Feedback Friday. <laughs> yeah, but um, I mean, look, this this can happen. Like Geno Smith was awful. Who got drafted by him? Who drafted him? The Jets. The Jets ruined Geno Smith, and he bounces around. And he's a backup mm -hmm. for four or five years. Now he's in his late or uh, his early 30s by the time he gets to Seattle has this renaissance in 2022, but it's not completely out of the realm of questioning. And that's where having Kevin O'Connell that can do this. He did this with Josh Dobbs. 
He made Nick Mullins look serviceable. Can he take a former top pick and make him into something with weapons around him? Yes, Judd, I, Phil and I are not saying that this is number one, two, or three option for the right. Vikings. But is right. it curious? Am I curious on In a it? vacuum, 100%. Would, would it be fun to see, like, hey, you have to play this hole with a seven iron. Can Kevin O'Connell do it? No. I have no I can't, You don't think it's fun at all to, to see what I have no happen. interest in doing... As somebody who wants, look, if this team had been through a lot of first round high pick QBs, I might, but I saw this. It was called the nineties. I, I don't need this one again. I feel like you're misremembering the nineties. They literally had Jim McMahon, Warren Moon, Jeff George, Randall Cunningham. These dudes were like in their thirties. But if you go back to 92, they, were... they had, they had guys like Gannon who they ran through and they screwed up Salisbury. And then they went through this guy and that guy and. Yeah, no, 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 no. And Jeff George, by the Judd way, Judd was drunk in the '90s, just so you guys know. That's, that's true, but no, I want to. I want. I want option A, but I understand that the Vikings, like, if the Vikings were to tell Kevin, "Hey, Kevin, here's the deal. We got one plan, and that's it." Yeah, you should have multiple. They plans. have multiple plans, yes. so yes, don't go crazy. Have two parachutes, basically, or four in this case. So, hey, before we get to a couple juicy, interesting mocks here, we just received word that the 20 VIP tickets have indeed sold out at the Fillmore. So thank you guys for for packing this thing. Keep an eye on the ticket website over the coming weeks here, which is scornorth.com slash party, because we have received some notes from people that they grabbed general admission tickets, and maybe they can't go anymore or they have an extra ticket. Uh, people can put their tickets and I would encourage too, like if you don't, if you aren't going, give someone else a chance to go to the Purple Daily Draft first. You can keep refreshing and keep an eye on scornorth.com slash party. Everyone in attendance is going to get a Purple Daily flag to wave along with Judd when the time comes, sponsored by Popcorn. And all VIPs in attendance will get a Popcorn sample bag, Popcorn of Minnetonka, the official flag sponsor of the Purple Daily Draft Party. I got a question: are are, are the are the free tickets now being scalped? I, I mean, I got a note from a guy. I haven't, I, I haven't I seen it yet, but <laughs> I basically got a note implying that there might be a market for the free tickets that won't be free. Are we gonna have like shady guys in trench coats That's standing outside the Fillmore? Hey, Purple Daily Just, Draft uh, Party. Uh, uh, with their little cardboard sign that says need tickets. Yeah, that's what I'm curious. I'm curious <laughs> if there's going to be a market for this stuff. Man, I mean, this is new territory for us, so I wouldn't I guess it wouldn't be shocking. So, hey, we got to we got to run here in a second. So, let's do these couple mocks to wrap the show. I want a mock. <sighs> Two fun mocks presented by Federated Mutual Insurance Company. If you're a business owner out there, make sure you have a game plan in place to stay focused on safety, preventing claims, the team at Federated is here to help support your business. They go back 100 plus years worth of experience. Federated Insurance offers a customizable lineup of industry specific coverages and risk management services to help you continue your winning streak. At Federated Mutual Insurance Company, it's our business to protect yours. Let's start with Field Yates, ESPN.com, boys. This is a two round mock from the Fieldster. I haven't looked through this, so I don't know if it includes trade. So we can it we can does. mock him. It does? It, okay. It will include trade, yes. Okay. So uh, Bears take Caleb Williams. Commanders take Jaden Daniels. Patriots take Drake May. Cardinals take Marvin Harrison Jr. So chalk, 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 chalk. And then we have a projected trade. Where the Minnesota Vikings are now on the clock with the fifth overall pick. The Chargers have traded out. So he's got the Vikings sending the 11, the 23, and a 2025 first rounder. So you, this is the... The Chargers are getting that yep. first rounder. They got to kick something back, right? Don't they? I I would not doubt that. I would not doubt you're right on that. But I, I think that... I think if they want to do this, the price of business might be the that 2025 first. But who knows? They might not give up. And, and it's for for J.J. McCarthy is what yep. they're doing this for. Okay, would you rather trade all of that for J.J. McCarthy or stand pat at 11, keep all your draft assets, and take Michael Penix? That's one I'd go with O'Connell. 
Like if O'Connell's like, hey man, Penix is just as good, then I'm yeah. staying pat. That's that's why I like the fact that you do have it's not the Spielman drafts where it's like, oh my god, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? I'm not gonna trade that pick, and now you're yeah. taking yeah. But if he but but if you know to go back to our conversations previously, if there is a big four and McCarthy's the fourth of the big four, and O'Connell's like, I'm worried about Penix's knees. I'm worried that he's not what you guys think. Then, yeah, I think I'd make that trade. He's got Bonix going 12, by the way, to the Broncos. And Michael Penix falling into the second round to the Raiders at 36. You see, now he's an insider, too. He's pretty plugged in because he, he worked for the Patriots. This is where I get really leery of people that are insiders on the draft and then people that really know the league, right? Yeah, although I don't know how much of it because he's been out of the league for like 10 years now. I feel like he's been on ESPN for a long time. And Belichick's out. A yeah, lot of the guys that he would have been plugged in with throwing it out there. are gone here. Uh, Lance Zierlein I want to mock. mock. Has mocked at NFL.com. Another prominent mocker. Bears Caleb Williams. Commanders Jaden Daniels. And a projected trade for the number three overall pick. Where the New York Giants are now on the clock and they select Drake May. So they pull the Godfather trade with the Patriots here. Yep. But then we have another trade in the number four slot where the Minnesota Vikings have moved their way up in a trade with the Cardinals. So he's saying it's picks 11 and 23 here. So they do keep their 2025 first round pick. And the Vikings select J.J. McCarthy. I want a mock! Mock! So, if you, you get off that easy to get to four, you should have a parade. Yeah, if you can keep your 2025... My, my parameters here are, if you can keep your 2025 first-round pick, go as high as you can and get the get the guy that you are comfortable with. If you're giving up a, a 2025 first and now you don't have any picks on in the first or second round of next year and you're still trying to build this thing, you better be damn sure you love the guy you're going up to get oh, more yeah. than the guys that could just be sitting there for you, the Michael Penix. And for the sake anyway. of the 2025 draft party as well, I'd really like him to keep that pick the more I think about it. The 25? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, because if they don't have a 25 first... Party. Yeah. We'll like, have what to figure out a different, a different uh, what are we gonna, way to, hey, way to frame it Hey, it's the up. third day draft never, party at I the Fillmore. I have not thought about that until right now. <laughs> I, have not, I, I had neither, actually. <laughs> it's the it's third day. It's the Saturday all-day draft party. <laughs> that sounds fun. <laughs> Fiesta Picks Festival. Well, Picks. Go back to the drawing board for us. So, all right, that's a wrap on this episode of Purple Daily. A lot of stuff covered here. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button and the like button on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. It also helps when you give us a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple and Spotify. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die.